two, Park Maintenance Facility Replacement Initiative. We have a review of initial project site plan and building design. So we've got Eric and Bill is here. So uh, I don't want to take it from here. Uh, I'm happy to start. Okay. The, uh, so what I have included, uh, and a lot of these things have kind of just come together very recently, thanks uh, in part to a lot of hard work that uh, Mr. Hansel's put forward. Um, we have uh, made it to the point where we kind of have a generalized site layout that has been included in here. Uh, I purposely kind of tried to put these out in color for you all. They are uh, uh, designed specifically to show the kind of spacing of the current facility versus the spacing of the new facility. And then what it also is included, just to be clear, is uh, diagrams for the building design itself as well as some conceptual, as well as some uh, conceptual renderings that have been uh, put together, kind of displaying what it, it could look like under this design. Um, kind of one of the big key things here is the, as you'll notice, the current site layout um, calls for removing the modular. Uh, previous ones had kind of looked at it as keeping the modular where it was and building in front of it. But the more we went through this, the more it made sense to incorporate not only that space but those functions into a uh, single building that would then also allow us to reduce the total footprint over the long term. The uh, uh, otherwise. As you kind of go through, uh, and a couple of the questions that I did get was, you know, the diff what is a conditioned area? Um, condition, when I listed on here, and Bill, you're free to jump in, please, is, uh, you know, you're looking at something fully enclosed, finished, insulated, the whole nine yards. Uh, uh, the open parking area, while it is enclosed, it does have open air areas more towards the top of it. Um, so with that said, uh, as you kind of look through and you look at some of the sites, um, one of the things we're also doing is, you know, kind of going through and looking at what all of these things may be and then potentially working with a uh, cost estimator as, who could break this down by component for us. Um, the other things I'm still waiting on, uh, which I expect to actually receive this week, is going to be a, a cultural resources and archaeological study. Um, that'll come back to us uh, and then eventually we'll be able to start to put all of these things together so that ideally still with the same end goal of, you know, by the end of June, hopefully being able to submit a site plan review application. Uh, I should also say Herb has obviously been heavily involved in some of these aspects as well. Uh, with that said, I would probably just either, if Bill has something he wants to add or if there's some specific questions the board may have, we can go from there. Actually, um, where the vehicles would be stored, it appears to me anyway that there is that open space. It's not fully enclosed. Is there an advantage to that? Is there some, I mean, rain can get in, right? Yes, no. In the, the covered area? Yeah, it's covered, but it, it's got a uh, portion of the wall that's still open to the elements. Right, yeah. right, right. So is there a reason for not enclosing where the vehicles would be stored? Yeah, the, well, my impression of the program um, and the use was that there's a lot of flexibility here that happens, that um, having vehicles stored is one thing, but it's not a specifically a garage um, per se, you know, that so when vehicles are pulled out, those areas can be used as, as workspace, maybe things are sitting there longer, maybe there's, uh, you know, the truck comes in and out every day, and so, um, so I don't see it so much as the sort of the specifically the vehicle storage area, um, it's, it's more of a flexible workspace. And I'm, the original thing actually worked backwards from the condition space that was minimally needed. So the 16th, the half of that roof, or half of that area that was uh, that's under roof, that's that's enclosed and insulated and uh, heated, mm -hmm. um, that uh, that square footage was sort of minimally necessary for the guys to store things for them to do work. Um, it was it's kind of a reduction to a degree of of uh, their preferred original plans where they had thrown out some much larger square footage. Right. And w in the discussions with, with Eric, um, what my suggestion was, was you're going to the expense of creating a slab. Uh, you're going to the expense of creating a roof and columns and structure for that roof. Um, there is a, 
incremental cost increase if you make it you know, uh, 1,600 square feet versus 3,200 square feet. But the first chunk of cost is just getting the concrete and the roof there and the structure. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to make sense to extend the 1,600 in condition space, take advantage of, you know, cost efficiency uh, of, of just extending the roof out, but not going further, at least initially, to condition it. Because the condition space can cost substantially more when you think about you know yeah, closing and costing and all the other things. So yeah. it's it's I mean it's interesting point. I, I, I think that it could be, you know, if down the line uh, the district wanted to enclose it, you know, that could easily be you know enclosed, but at least you'd get some economy of scale. So that's where it came from. And and again I I just sort of hesitate thinking of it as specifically, well that's the parking area. It's I think the guys would be working there. I think at a certain point, if they needed excess space for you know a few weeks or a month or whatever, I wouldn't be surprised if then you know the vehicles get stored more in the courtyard, mm -hmm. in the front or the rear courtyard. Mm -hmm. um, but it gives that option. That's that's how I looked at it. I, I see. Okay. And by the way, thanks for the opportunity to to you know to do work. It's nice to kind of just supply some ideas and visualize some some things and, and care about what you know that area looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. Um, the modular building, would there be use for that elsewhere, potentially? Potentially. Mm -hmm. Potentially. It's, uh, we talked classroom once, I don't care. Mm -hmm. it's, it's lived a pretty good, useful life. Uh huh. What was it? So, uh, before I would put any level of kids or anything like that, that I would want to look at that. Mm -hmm. It might also have some level of resale value. We don't have further value for it, we'd have to find a place to keep it. Uh, wherever you move it, place it to, it would need the infrastructure we run uh, for some of the facets that are in there, as well as permitting and so on and so forth. Okay. Of the we haven't thought that far down the road. I was just curious. I mean, you know, this is new. This is different, and uh, you know, there seem to be some opportunities there as well. Uh, that hasn't escaped. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, the people that showed up at the meeting that are contiguous to the proposed um, structure, um, did they have any particular, I mean, did they go ballistic, did they have any particular comments one way or the other? Uh, well, I don't want to speak for them. Um, I, I would, uh, to answer your question, no, nobody went ballistic and nobody <laughs> uh, did cartwheels either. You yeah, know what I mean? Uh, I think uh, their primary look is, okay, how is this going to directly impact Sure. Because I can, you know, pop my fence and I'm standing on top of it, kind of a thing. Uh -huh. um, I haven't really uh, gotten any sort of follow up from any of them uh, since that one particular meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think that they, again, I don't want to speak for them, uh, to be honest with you, Jeff, I, but no, there was no strong pushback, nor was there strong, this is great. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's certainly different. It's certainly. At least in my mind, uses the space very efficiently. Uh, that was one of the big challenges for uh, Bill. Um, you know, kind of as well as Irv and why we did all these other various surveys and topos and looking at you know placement, reducing. Um, you know, and I, Bill and I worked pretty well together just in saying, okay, here's where we started. Where can we get this down to? We've shown this to the park guys. They like the design, uh, the flow. You know, you got to keep in mind that rather than having Front doors, entrances are going to be through the long ends, through sure. the side. Exactly. Uh, with an ability, actually, if, if really desired, to be able to drive all the way through the entire facility, not just into the initial bay uh, covered area, but right. to roll up and be able to pull a vehicle all the way into the workshop area and out the other side of the workshop area. Mm -hmm. Understood. Yeah. Interesting design, for sure. That's great. Right. 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 Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments, discussion from the board? Well, I thought it was a really interesting design. I'm uh, looking forward to see what the rest of our governmental agencies think of the placement. Mm -hmm. That's all. I've heard that the uh, horseshoe contingent is happy with it. That's important. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious. all that really matters, right? As long as we've got that. As long as we can put a cone of silence in there. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Uh, questions, comments from the public? Linda? Well, since I didn't see the presentation, I do have a couple questions. What exactly is the entry court? What, what is that? Is it a building? Is it, is it a patio? Is it an open space? It's is an it open a, area that's fenced. It's an open area that's fenced. Correct. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's where like you'll have individual storage bins of, full of tools and stuff? Uh, or materials or uh, oh, okay. things along those lines, uh, vehicles, whatever. It's uh, uh, things that don't necessarily need to be enclosed or, or only that okay. are permanent. But the idea and the goal behind all of this is when you go out there now and you see things that are just kind of out and open, every single thing is going to be behind the fence. As you go through there, there's not going to be material veins that are sitting outside. That's, that's the goal. That's the intention of what we're trying to design. There's not going to be loose pieces of equipment sitting around outside. Everything will be behind the fence. Okay. And Eric, if I can add... Um, yeah, please, Bill, please. Uh, to hopefully help that there is also... Um, what that also affords you as well as the visual cleanliness is that you get multiple levels of security. You got an eight-foot fence to go through before then you get into another covered area that you imagine might have, you know, a little bit more protection and you know lighting and, and then and then the closed area itself. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first I, I really want to thank you, um, Eric, for putting out the larger picture mm -hmm. because it's much easier to see what you know what's in there. Um, but can you can anybody tell me what trees are going to be removed? Uh, the There's three big trees. Yeah, they're all pines. I'm sorry? They're all pines. Big pines. They're pine, all pine, pine, pine pines. Trees. Pine. Right. Right. I know, but which mm -hmm. ones will be removed? That's what I asked. Um, are they staying or are they... No, some, some would, I believe that there's two that would need to go. Two out and of three? And you can kind of see them in here, yeah. Well, there's more like six or seven that are there. Oh, there's three big ones. In that immediate immediate area, yeah. yeah. The only trees marked for removal are all pines. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, then one, one one question. Well, can you sell Gary's old office? Can you sell the trailer? I don't know. No. Okay. I don't know. And um, one other question about the open part at the top, is there some way that that will be critter-proofed so that you're not going to have raccoons and rats and all kinds of things climbing up and going in there? That was something that we discussed. It could easily uh, be if netting or something along that line was needed, it could, okay, be, some, it something. could be put in. <coughs> uh, but keeping in mind that the conditioned area won't be open, just the... Uh, oh, no, but the, where they put the trucks. Mm -hmm. and uh, stuff, so it could be. Okay, and then um, my only comment is the, the picture looks like it's an Eichler to me, and we don't have Eichlers in that neighborhood. I mean, we might have them in the berries, but that whole neighborhood, Pinewood, Quietwood, you know, right behind and everything, they're not Eichlers, so I, but Miller I Creek just, right across the street. I just think, I'm sorry? Miller Creek right across the street from the, that driveway. Oh yes, there's about four or five. Yeah. I know, there's about four or five on Miller Creek across from the community center. Mm -hmm. But all the other houses surrounding on Miller Creek and Pinewood and Quietwood, they're all no, I know. regular looking houses. Mm -hmm. Other, they're not I, like I just, that's all. I just wanted to make a comment that it kind of looks like somebody's Eichler. That's all I wanted to comment about. Thanks for going for big bucks. <laughs> Just, I, well, we can call it an Eichler or we can call it a, a flat roof building, but I think if we were to try to copy the Cape Cottage style. I'm not talking about what, copying no, Cape Cottage. No, but if you were to do that, I think what Bill has done, and, and I appreciate it, is keep that roof as low as possible so as not to affect those neighbors. You can use the Marinwood model. Okay, think of it as the Marinwood model. Looks like we can put a, we can put a filigree door up. It's Bill Cycler. Maybe you could donate your house. Uh, <laughs> okay, thanks. Aside from the pic, the, the pictures and this and that, um, 
Are there any, have there been any choices of building materials and stuff like that, like exterior walls and that kind of thing? In the presentation, I guess, did you, you didn't include that no. sheet. So um, uh, um, one thing that I had talked about um, was, as a starting point, um, a few a few different ideas. One was that, you know, it's obviously a very natural area, you want to bring as much of that warmth <laughs> into it as, as possible. Um, so, for example, the siding of the fences, I, was, I had included uh, some images of a, a vertical stained gray, uh, uh, whitewashed kind of a fence, maybe like a light gray. But something that was, you know, had some, some warmth to it, um, but was, you know, serviceable. And, um, and, and that would be the, the main cladding that would go up to eight feet. <coughs> Um, the columns and structural, just for cost and simplicity, would be maybe a painted enameled uh, you know, metal steel columns. Um, I think there, you know, we, we talked about some options in terms of wood. The uh, the underside of the roof, which is substantial because you see that that structure would be similar to what you see, you know, in the pool building in terms of blue laminated columns oh, uh -huh. with exposed, uh, uh, you know, decking mm -hmm. on the underside and. Um, uh, you know, the, the upper skylight area, when the idea of the roof is really to keep it low on the neighbor's side and then to, to bring in sudden light into the workspace and then filter that with some vertical uh, slats, like wood slats, maybe one by threes, and they might be the same type of wood as the, um, as the siding. So it's not a huge pallet, it's, it would be, I think, kind of similar to, to the other you know, buildings here. Mm -hmm. And in terms of, uh, you know, the other aesthetic influence um, that I talked to Eric early on about was, um, you know, the Miwoks don't have very much architectural influence, but, um, but there is, you know, lead to kind of architecture, and so the, the doing the angled columns at the front is a little bit of a modern nod to, to that and trying to do a little bit something, you know, special with, the, with those elements. Yeah. So that's, that was where the sensibility was, was basically coming. And I imagine that, um, uh, you know, there would be a landscape level, landscaping level on top of this in terms of, you know, shrubbery and hedges and other planting that might, you know, again, kind of grow it into the landscape. And Joe Runco had volunteered uh, a little bit of time to kind of, he had provided any drawings for this, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to weigh in on that, you know, if it, if it were to go forward. Very good. Looks very constructive. Was that just kind of a Yeah, a little more. Yeah, shoot for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, to, to much of Bill's point, aesthetics are, you know, second just right behind uh, functionality. Sure. You know, especially where it's going, and it needs to look good, it needs to look clean. Uh, it, you know, definitely represents, in my opinion, an upgrade to the situation we currently have. But with that said, I could throw anything out there, and it would be an upgrade to the situation we currently have. Uh, but a lot of thought went into exacting placement, how to do it, entry, you know, egress into everything else, uh, just really trying to think it through, looking at some of the other things. Uh, Bill did a really good job incorporating kind of the physical needs assessment that the park guys had put together in terms of what everything needs to go. Um, Bill's been great to work with, just to say it out loud in a meeting. He's been very uh, uh, attentive and accommodating and has listened to everybody uh, and has incorporated a lot of neat ideas into this. So it's where we're at right now. It's, you know, obviously still very conceptual, but uh, it, it, it's starting to take shape. I think, you know, if I can add to, to what you're saying, thanks, I appreciate it. I appreciate Irv's time and clarifying much of the site stuff as well. But, um, you know, one, one thing it's, it's nice to see to advance this to this kind of a level, it's not so much you know, that you've taken a design that far and it's done or, or anything. It's more that there's now there's a lot of information there that can be more specifically priced. And from that point on, you can go in all sorts of different directions, uh, even if it's in a different site or, you know, whatever. At least you're getting a knowledge base here where you can start to compare an actual thing rather than just somebody waving their hands around and saying, like, well, well there's a box that you can stick here in. You know, so I think it's I think it's important uh, with clients and the architectural process that that we get to something that looks fairly real and it can be really judged and you can say that's more than what we need or less and and here are some some more reliable costs about it so that's we're in a process and I appreciate the uh, you know like moving forward to invest in that. Yeah. So are we on track? 
for what June thirtieth is up here looking for? Uh, we're hoping. Yeah. You know, everything seems to bring new days, but that's still the goal, and I still think we could be on track. Um, uh, I'll close it out, but I'll let Eric had a question or a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, just uh, Bill reminded me of something that the, the process we have to go through in the county is called site plan review. And it's a brand new process, and I'm not 100% aware of it. As compared to the old process, it's what's called design review. Mm -hmm. And this is in there because of the way the countywide plan sets up criteria for in certain areas. My point being what Bill mentioned, and what we are probably going to need as part of that application is some kind of a conceptual landscape plan because the biological assessment talks about re-landscaping the areas uh, where the old buildings were, and we're going to, I assume, put some kind of a nice trail around this building uh, to continue the, the walking path uh, mm -hmm. down that panhandle uh, section. So it's some, I don't know if somebody can talk nice to Joe. I, got a, yeah, I should have volunteered him for it. He's already well, done some well, I volunteered him <laughs> for, for the original conceptual drawings to get some discussion going. Right. And, uh, but we, we may need something to include in our application, is my point. So well, and I think, to your point, I'm sorry? Vegetation management plan may need to be included in the site plan. Is it ADA? You need ADA, too? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The other aspect, too, at least especially as what was addressed in the biological plan, is that because where the current building sits so close on the creek bank is uh, reparation of that area, um, and those are pretty specific guidance, that we know what it is in terms of uh, native pl uh, replantings, uh, clearing out old stuff, uh, what zones along the thing, different kind of plant. We have all that information because we actually did a project like that not too long ago. Any other comments, Stephen? Yeah, um, yeah, I actually have a lot of comments. First of all, uh, congratulations to Bill. I think uh, aesthetically he's done a, a nice job and it's uh, it's kind of a shame to you, you know, bury his talents in a, a building, a functional building that won't be seen uh, widespread by the community. I think that we would do far better to retain Bill uh, to create a structure, uh, a focal point for the community. Uh, I suggest a stage or a sitting area or something where, um, you know, it really celebrates community. I was curious um, after that meeting, um, uh, you know, I, I was curious, okay, so we're a community of 1,700 homes or 2,300 homes if you include CSA 13. How many uh, have designer maintenance facilities? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, and, you know, even, the, I would point out, even the, the celebrated, uh, Civic Center, Frank Lloyd Wright Civic Center has a very functional uh, maintenance facility. Now there's a reason why, uh, here's a college word, why there's a, a building vernacular to uh, maintenance facilities and, and auto repair shops. And the reason is, you know, vernacular, why does a barn look like a barn? Why does a shop look like a shop? And it has to do with space efficiencies. Um, unfortunately, as nice as Bill's building looks, it's a long rectangle, and it's a large rectangle, 4,400 square feet uh, under roof uh, for three guys. Um, and what that means is there's one entrance in and one entrance out, and the movement inside there, there's a lot of wasted space. The reason why you see elongated buildings with garage bays uh, for most maintenance facilities. Uh, in fact, every maintenance facility I've seen in the county um, has this basic design is because it's most space efficient. You pull a vehicle in, you can pull it out, you don't have to disturb other vehicles. You can put tools against the, the, the wall. There's virtually no wasted space. So for about the uh, footprint uh, of about uh, 25 by 60, the, 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 uh, 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 you could have a four bay garage with a little, little office 
Um, and I think I sent you all uh, an email with some pictures. Um, with the cost savings, if we did this, these, these, these are really kind of stock sorts of plans. And I'm sorry they're not as exciting as bills. We can still retain Bill and, and perhaps put the, uh, that talent to work on a, on a, a better, better expression for our community. Um, I, I also want to commend Bill because um, he's well aware of the uh, stream conservation setback and he tried his darndest to, to push it as far away from there. So I understand why he, he cited it where he did. It still encroaches on that area. That's going to be an area of dis dispute. And um, uh, I think if we, if we scale back the ambitions uh, for that particular building, uh, we will have more money to put into other facilities. In fact, it's funny that he mentions Miwok Village because I, I have been talking about uh, doing a, a, a natural playground, and I think that would be wonderful to have a Miwok Village type natural playground right along the banks there where a Miwok Village might be uh, for, for our children. Um, imagination, you know, let's, let's think, think how we can do things better than just, just okay. Uh, the other, the other thing I want to say back there, uh, a couple other observations, is that you know our area that our three guys take care of, it's smaller than most schools, and no school has the amount of facilities plus a, a materials depot like our guys do. So um, I hope whatever goes back there that we don't do any materials. Uh, uh, depot or, or very very minimal um, uh, because it just takes up way too much space along a very pretty uh, spot along Miller Creek. Any other? Um, two quickies. <coughs> One, I was reading the report that the district manager got from some study about the birds and the bees and the fish and everything. Um, it was talking about the birds and the nesting critters and the times that the eggs are there and the babies are being born. It said the, something about demolishing the area over the winter. Do, does anybody know when we're going to be demolishing the old maintenance stuff? And is the plan to be over the winter so we won't disrupt all these little critters everywhere? There's no timeline set at this point. I'm sorry? There's no timeline set. No timeline yet? Point. Okay, thank you. And then the other thing was, I just was, was very curious because it looks to me like now the third house in from Miller Creek is going to have its entire backyard uh, just over the fence. There's going to be something there now. And I was wondering if the third person in from Miller Creek was at the Park and Rec meeting when the presentation was given. That's Donna. Yes. Excuse me? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. All right, any final discussion? I just uh, finally say that uh, if I were critiqued as nicely as you just did, Stephen, and all things in my life, I would be such a lucky man. <laughs> so thank you for, uh, for your kind words. And I think you make, you know, you have a lot of valid uh, uh, concerns. Um, I'll just say, in terms of, you know, design issues, a couple things, um, you know, Vernacular um, architecture is definitely, um, you know, should be appreciated and looked at as, as um, sensible models. And I think this actually, as kind of a, a simple shed type of structure, is, is trying to use a little bit of that um, rather than having another kind of more modern reference. You know, there's plenty of old sheds that are just, you know, pitch, single pitch roofs. Um, I do think that the, uh, that the decision if it needs to be changed or made or further refined about the degree to which this building is a, is a garage versus a workshop versus a mix of both, uh, it affects how it's designed. And, and uh, specifically, you know, what, I, what, what was coming through to me and what you're seeing uh, materialized is, is that it's not specifically just a garage, that there is a lot of work that's done. And there's work that's done outside currently where things are left 
prepared outside, which really should be done in more of a protected, you know, environment. So if if there's you know that direction could certainly go a different way, garage versus work, you know, shop. Um, and uh, then, then finally, just in terms of uh, you know how that would reflect on what you, what anyone would kind of sensibly do if it were more of a garage and had more garage doors. My personal concern was that um, when you line the facade with garages, that's what it's going to look like. And you know, um, there is a intention here to care about the look of what people see. Because we can sort of say, well, it's a maintenance ship, or it's just a, you know, an auto garage. Um, and that's fine if you take that typical model, auto garage and maintenance ship, and it's behind a building and it's hidden away or it's in a you know it's on East Francisco Boulevard and it's just blends in with the other industrial stuff. But as soon as you put that prototype, that type in a, a, a you know beautiful area, what should be a, a more beautiful area, um, I think you need to decorate it and dress it up. And, and I think there would be a lot of people who uh, would react very negatively if they saw you know a well, torn down there now and a very much garage looking building was put up. So I think that the district and the board has to decide where does the community put the value in that space? Does it come along, does the site location basically move you to a point where you have to spend a little bit more money for the quality of the design there because of where it is? Um, or not, you know, it's, uh, I'm, I'm not saying if driving as the architect, I'm just saying that's what you're seeing reflected is a little bit of a, you know, it's not trying to be a type of hall, it's just trying to say like this isn't a this is not, you know, back of house uh, area that doesn't matter how it how it looks. Um, so that that's that's where that's coming from. It could, it could go a different way. One quickie. I had the pleasure of sitting in on I think the first meeting with Bill to scope out what the parks guys and Eric thought was needed there. And they were all feeding in their desires, and they had some sketches they had put together. And I think, you know, from that information and a little bit of competing uh, ideas, that, that Bill has come up with a really creative and, and usable and not looking like a maintenance shed um, in an area that has site constraints. Uh, I, I thought it was very creative to say, okay, that maybe that modular building has just about used up its useful life anyway. Let's use that space and not, you know, stay as far from the creek as we can and keep the building still as low as we can to not impinge on the neighbors too much. And, and it, it's, I just hope we can afford it. That's a good point. And that is, you know, we'll see. Yeah, well, I think it's beautiful and I'm really surprised, I think, in a way, and, and grateful that you're working on this bill because I think it's like a perfect skill set and experience and knowledge about the community to, you know, value the aesthetic component of it because I think that in some ways, yeah, putting, taking, you know, an old dilapidated whatever's there and, you know, what, what do we do with it? And I think here's an opportunity to leave something more beautiful than what was there before. And I don't know that we would often get that opportunity. Sometimes it's just, you know, business slogging along and this I think is really, I mean, these, these pictures. I'm like, oh, I want to go work there. <laughs> so, well, I had a professor who, who, who said, really made a really impression, strong impression on me. He said, you know, any building is, to be honest, a scar in the landscape. If the landscape is the pristine, beautiful thing, you know, uh, any building is going to be a scar, and our job is to try to make the most beautiful scars we can afford and, and, and come up with. Agreed. I love it. I All think right. there's one thing that that's missing on here. Where are the piles of of rocks and sand and ground cover going to be? Is, exactly. is there a place for the piles mm -hmm. of stuff? Yeah, that's what we talked about with your first question in that forecourt area, or it could also go in the in the half court area. Everything will really? be behind the wall. Yeah, See, that's, that's the intention. Oh my gosh. Just functionally, I. Ah, oh, that's fabulous. I, that's that's why a, a rectangle is not going to work for you there. That's that's. I think if you look at it from the aspect of workflow, it, it doesn't it. work. Even your well, I, I was following on. Yeah, uh, you raised your hand and calling you. Okay. Did you call Linda? Wow. So we're gonna move. Thank you, Bill, for coming. And sure. we are gonna move on to recreation and park maintenance activities.